So now, ladies and gentlemen, live and in colour, it's Mr. Wayne Lovejuice. The other day I produced a movie Had a cat with an interesting trappy We said that the YouTube algorithm Really act that happy If a channel only broadcasts once a week So we decided we could text ya Whenever we've got a piece of news in our new book Good evening ladies and gentlemen, my name's John Downs and welcome to another episode of On The Track Extra. For those of you who don't know, every Wednesday evening at 6.30 and every Saturday afternoon at 3, we bring you a melange of hard science, weird shit and surreality. What's surreality you ask? Well, this is. Mind the gap. Or maybe it isn't. Doesn't really matter either way. Those of you who are regular viewers of this show will probably recognise this row of books that I have on top of the hi-fi amp behind me. There, as some of you have noticed, a collection of books by Bill Drummond and his alter ego, Tenzing Scott Brown. Bill Drummond's best known to many of you as one half of the Justified Ancients of Mumu and the KLF, a particularly peculiar and admirable arty musical ensemble who had quite a few hits and the most popular band in the world 32 years ago. There is a very good case to be made that they are the most 14 musical ensemble of all time. And I'm not going to pretend that they don't leave fingerprints all over this show and quite a lot of the other things that the CFZ do. And now you know that, it might be amusing for you to have a look and see if you can catch some of them. But. That's not what we're here to talk about today. We're actually talking about this. This is a disparate pile of stuff which ends up being on top of my Bill Drummond's book collection because otherwise it gets stuck down the side of the armchair. It is really not a good place for it to go. Most things, when they arrive through the posts and the CFZ, go into a pending tray from which Graham either does stuff with it or Karen files it appropriately and I can conveniently forget about it. But stuff that I want to talk about on this show or stuff that I think is important enough for me to point in your general direction gets put here on the side of my armchair above my Bull Drummond books. And today being a Wednesday and time for On The Track Extra it is time for the first time in several weeks we're going to have a look at this bundle of stuff and to see what it contains. Okay, I'm not sure what's in here. I know some of the stuff. There's other stuff that I have absolutely no idea. So, let's have a look and see what we have. First, we have... Ah, uh, this is not of much interest to anybody. This is last March's issue of the Village News, the parish magazine which I edit each month. So forget about that. What do we have next? We have, oh, this is something we've already done. We're not getting very good pickings out of this month, are we? This is the latest issue of Flying Snake which we did a show on some months ago so again it should have been filed and shouldn't be put in a pile of things on top of our Bill Drummond books. Now we have a compliment slip 
from a guy from Skidmark Multimedia and it is a it is from a review copy of the CD which sounds very nice but again not of any interest and here we have the latest book by a man with a wonderful name Randy Duke and it is a gonzo slice of life, life come novel we're not sure how much of it is real and how much is not set in Peru and it's a very 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 interesting and fun book to read I recommend it to anybody it's called Of Pisco and Peru but once again nothing to do with what we should be writing about but what do we have we have two things from the Devon branch of butterfly conservation and I think that's worth having a look at there's some more here by the way what there is I don't know but let's have a look I always go through the butterfly conservation magazine when it comes through but I don't think I've ever made the effort to go through the local branch magazine which is often even more interesting for example it starts here with a very interesting thing there's an article here about how to make wild spaces this is part of the butterfly conservation wild spaces campaign and it is asking what kinds of wild spaces can you commit to create and it says here we need to create as many moth and butterfly havens as possible so that there are lots of places for them to complete their life cycles a wild space can be anything from a patio pot to an allotment plot the space just needs to be a permanent place for butterflies and moths to feed, breed and shelter. A wild space needs to include places to feed. It needs nectar-rich plants for adult insects to drink from. Nectar gives them energy to fly. Breed. A variety of plants that the caterpillars can feed upon. Some species are very fussy, whilst other species have a wild range of food plants. Without these, though, they cannot reproduce. And shelter. When a caterpillar is ready to turn into an adult butterfly or moth, it will say, search out a safe spot where it can make its cocoon or chrysalis, also known as a pupa. This is usually in the soil or amongst fallen leaves and plant stems. Now, I'm not going to read the whole article to you, but it is absolutely excellent advice and this is advice that I am doing my best to follow here in my garden when my father was alive he did his best to make the CFZ garden which wasn't the CFZ garden then it was just his private garden he tried to make the garden a sort of mini stately home and since we moved in 17 years ago it's been becoming more and more of a wild space and although I'm still keeping the main round lawn which you see as you come up towards the house the rest of the garden I am letting grow wild with the idea that it is going to help the biodiversity of the garden increasingly now what we have here we now have well this is interesting there's a new moth group website for Devon Archibald I'm trying to film not have dogs rattling oh, I'm sorry dad starting again we have a Devon moth group website and it looks very very good indeed and you can become a special an extra special member called a golden cinema member for 20 quid a year which is payable to the company that produced the website not to dmg and for four pounds fifty a month you can have this vip membership which gives you same access to this eight other county live county sites with the same style 
of website. It's interesting here, for example, to see the Garden Tiger Moth page on the website. They're absolutely gorgeous moths. I haven't seen one in many, many, many years. Not alive, anyway. And here you not only have a picture of the moth and details of its lifestyle, but you have a map showing all the records of it in Devon over the years. And it's nice to see that at least two records are within the confines of my village here in Woolsey. Now here's something that I really am quite interested in going to and I think I'm going to ask Miss Isabel That's me! very nicely and see if she can take me. It's the Members Day 2023 for the Devon Branch of Butterfly Conservation and this year it's held on Saturday the 14th of October at the Boniface Centre in the grounds of Crichton Parish Church. Doors will open at 9.30am for a prompt start at 10. There's a great lineup of speakers. For example, we have Max Anderson, BC's Southwest Landscape Officer, giving two talks. One, Moths as Nocturnal Pollinators, and the other, The Lives of Our Lycenid Butterflies. Then we have Audrey Compton. She's giving a talk on action on climate change in Teenbridge, the Teenbridge Wildlife Wardens Scheme. And there's a talk by DBC member Robert ha Roger Hamling, a visit to Bystock and then off to the pub. Refreshments will be served at morning and afternoon breaks along with an amazing selection of cakes. Well, cakes, I'm there. Cake? Count me in. Cakes are the real meaning of the universe. But please remember to bring your own packed lunch. I would seriously suggest that you think about going. I think anybody who's interested in the natural world should join Butterfly Conservation. But those of you living in Devonshire, please join the Devon branch. And it'd be lovely to think that I'd see you there on the 14th. Now, what do we have? There's an interesting article here about filming butterflies in Abbott's Kurzweil. Because apparently the committee were approached by... Now, any French speakers here, forgive me because my French is lousy and my French pronunciation is even worse. Oh, you English, you make me sick, you and your Brexit. Ha! but I think it's pronounced Agence France Press, which even I can work out is the French press agency, with a request to help out with some filming. They explained how they were working on a story about the decline of butterflies and moths and the implications for biodiversity. The idea was to interview some children and film them as they tried to spot some butterflies. As they write, we duly rounded up the children and headed to our local community orchard. The day was hot and sunny, so we were in with a good chance of spotting something. The children did a magnificent job, despite having to redo bits of filming, so Lavinia and Marie could get content from different angles. They're looking forward to seeing the results of their hard work sometime next month. The children found caterpillars on nettles and on hedge mustard, but only saw two adult butterflies, which they identified as a large white Bing. and a common blue. They learnt that not seeing many species is just as important as spotting lots and how all the data we collect goes towards helping to build a complete picture of what is happening in the natural world. Well done to everybody involved. I think that is a remarkably good thing for a media company to be doing. Now, 
This next story is a particularly weird one because yesterday I had a message from Miss Guinevere with a picture of a moth that she found in her bathroom. Could I identify it? And the answer, I'm afraid, was no, I couldn't. So I sent it, or sent the copy of the picture, to our old friend, Dr. Max. Dr. Max! Dr. Max! Dr. Max! Hey! And as you probably know, Dr. Max Blake is the head entomologist of the Invasive Species Unit at the Forestry Commission. And he wrote back saying that the box tree moth is a native of East Asia, China, the Republic of Korea and Japan, and is thought to have got introduced to Europe via trade. It's subsequently found its way to the UK, being first recorded as azults in 2008 in southeast England, and larvae were first found in 2011. And they were first found in Devon on the 3rd of July 2018, when one was recorded at Light in Tinmouth. And since then, there have been a staggering 335 recording, recordings from the county, but weirdly none of them are up here in North Devon. Let's wait and see what happens over the next year or so. This is a really interesting article. It's got all sorts of information about the box tree moth and it tells us all the things that otherwise we wouldn't know. And I sincerely recommend you check it out. And then it looks at the records of different butterflies over the last year. And there's an article here which concentrates on the fact that it seems to have been a very good year for both orange tips and holly blues in both North and South Devon. And it examines the way that both species, but particularly the holly blue, are known to be a, what's been known as a boom and bust species, as they have one or more parasitic wasps that can get the upper hand and cause great mortality in the larvae, so that in some seasons it can be very hard to spot the adult butterflies. A couple of decades ago, the author says he remembers two occasions when a brood seemed to be missing, but fortunately the following broods were noticeably better. But to get to the point of this mention, the author said he's not witnessed a bust season in a long time, and his garden in Chudley has had good numbers for what seems like a long time, so wonders, one wonders what has happened to the boom and bust pattern. And he asks if there's anybody else in the region who would like to comment on that. And finally, there is a fantastic article about something which I saw once in my life back in the early 1970s. I'm just going to read this completely. This is from a man called Jonathan Aylett. On a hot Wednesday afternoon, the 14th of June, I was walking down the public footpath which skirts the edge of Rora Down in Ilsington Parish, ba, 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 on the field side of the footpath above Rora Farm, there was some thick outgrowths of bramble over a stretch of some 50 or more yards which adjoin a grass, grass field that had not been cut. The two dogs were running around in front of us and as we approached these bamboo bushes there was what could only be described as an eruption of clouds of breath butterflies. And he goes on to say that they had disturbed up to 300 or more small heaths. These were the only species they observed which were nectaring on the bam bramble flowers. Now this is something I saw once back in I think 1972, back in the field above the little stream at Venn, which is between the village I live in and the woods of Huddersfield where the big cat reports are 
And at the time, I had the permission of the local farmer to go anywhere on his land. And I was going down to the stream, and I was going through this field, which again was long grass that hadn't been cut, and a whole cloud of these butterflies. Again, they were small heaths, flew up. And I've never seen so many, and they were absolutely magnificent. It was one of those great, great experiences, which I look back now as a relatively old man, and I cherish. Now, that's it for this issue of the Butterfly Conservation Devon Branch magazine, but I strongly recommend that you check it out. Now the other thing which I have, which I want to show you, and I want to share it with you, is something I have been trying to get hold of for 43 years. And I'll tell you why, because I was last in Hong Kong in December 1980. My Auntie Pip died and left me a grand, and I spent most of that grand going back to Hong Kong much to my father's annoyance. He said that I should have saved it up for something for my future. Well, I went to Hong Kong and it's cost me most of my money paying for the hotel and the flights and everything. And when I got there, I found that every shop had this brilliant book about the butterflies of Hong Kong in it. And I couldn't afford it. And I was really chagrined not to be able to afford it for myself because it looked like a fantastic book and I wanted it then and I've wanted it ever since and I've never been able to find it and guess what dear sweet Richard Muirhead found it and he gave it to me as a birthday present so thank you Richard you have really I'm not going to say made my week made my day you've made my decade as far as books about butterflies are concerned Thank you, my dear sweet boy, that means a hell of a lot.